start with a question that really is, I think, first and foremost on people's minds when they when they think about um, astronauts, which is when did you first get the bug? When when did you first decide, hey, you know what? I want to be an astronaut. That's something that I'd like to be able to do. When I was growing up, it wasn't something the girls did. And when I saw pictures of the Mercury 7, you know, I, I just didn't see anything that I could relate to and it never occurred to me that I could be one of them. And it wasn't until college when I met Dr. Sally Ride, the first American woman to go to space. And, you know, she came and she gave a lecture at MIT and I just, you know, heard her talk, knew she was educated in, in the sciences and that that counted and she needed that education and yet she had this job that involved, you know, exploration and adventure and I thought, I want that job. <laughs> So from that point, how did you pursue becoming an astronaut? What did you do to actually get you here? I think it's hard for most people to think that they could become astronauts. I, I know that that was the, the case for me. And at the same time, it was a challenge I wanted to take on, and I just started doing some research. You know, I, I was at MIT. I thought, we've got to have some alumni that are astronauts. And so I asked the alumni office, and they told me, and I got contact information, and I wrote away to those people. And you know, a lot of them wrote back or called back, which I just thought was really, really nice of them. And I started to get a, a picture of what I needed to do uh, in order to get this job. And, and basically none of them would tell me. And the reason is, is because there, there isn't a recipe. And, and at least what I tell people is that you need to do what is, you know, your passion and be as good at that as you can be and hope that the space program needs someone with that passion and those skills. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, just making sure you get the skills along the way that will, you know, keep avenues open for you that you are going to be able to do things that you're passionate about. So that's what I tried to do and I was in the right place at the right time and here I am. So the space program is clearly changing. Uh, we're moving from one era into another, the end of the space shuttle and who knows what's to come next. Give us a sense in your estimation for what you think the next five to ten, maybe even twenty years hold and, and how that specifically applies to the kind of passion that kids might be able to, uh, to experience around the space program. I think then in the next five or ten years will be the age of the space station. It is going to be simply amazing. I just got back a month ago from my six-month mission, and I'll tell you that I didn't want to leave. I mean, eventually, but I would have certainly stayed another five or six months up there because, you know, we, meaning the whole space community, has built this amazing structure and facility up in space, and it is, it is open for business and people like me are trained and you can go and you can go up there and do amazing things that just simply can't be done down here and there's so many interesting questions to be answered that you know a shuttle mission is you know so exciting where it launches and we're all going to follow the launch and the mission and the landing we have people living in space every single day in low earth orbit waking up brushing their teeth working all day, going to bed too late, listening to music, playing music. I mean, it's a place that we, as a people, live. And I'm really, in a way, excited that this will be the, the, you know, the decade of the space station where it becomes pretty normal that people live in space. And it'll be amazing to see what we do. So, uh, as we were taking our lunch break, we were playing some CDs in the car. Well, CDs, I say, actually MP3s uh, in the car. And we were thinking what kind of background music would, would work best with the launch of a space shuttle. Did you have a favorite uh, CD or a favorite album that you played when you were on the space station? Well, for launch, for the launch for of the... the launch, yeah. uh, well, I can pretty much guarantee you I know what they're going to be playing up there during the launch of the space shuttle. ZZ Top. <laughs> And that is because Mike Fossum is on that space station and there's nothing else that man will play. <laughs> That's great. So uh, we're trying to appeal to kids, we're trying to, to get their enthusiasm up, and we're trying to get their, their parents excited about the fact they can pass this on to their kids, this great legacy. One of the neat things about Apollo and the space shuttle was that we had this sense we could overcome virtually any adversity. Uh, it, it gave us the, the, uh, the collective ambition uh, that we needed at times as a nation and, and globally. Um, do you think the space station will, will do that? Are there, are there other things beyond that that will give us that sense of ambition once again, a mission to Mars? Is there something else that, that's going to give us that same sense of pride and, and ambition? We really achieve something incredible. 
I, I think that now that we're going to have a, a few more resources to be able to basically show off our space station and share life up there. I mean, who knows? Maybe we'll have. A, I mean, it's it's a reality show. You can tune in on the internet every day and watch people working on the space station, and I think that's pretty neat. I mean, just to watch and realize that it's not just today that we float around up there, and it's not floating; it's flying, and and just. You know, I, I don't know. I, I don't really like physics. Okay, it wasn't my thing in school, and what that meant was not that I didn't need to do physics, but I had to work harder at physics. But being up there, even the physics experiments are really, really fun. One of the things that we're focusing on is social media and social networking, and how that is going to impact positively mm -hmm. uh, space exploration and the space program. What are your What's your thought on that? How do you think social media ties into all of this, and does the International Space Station become sort of a focal point for social media. Right now, I know you don't even have a really good internet connection on the, uh, on the actually station. our yeah our internet connection has actually gotten much better just in the past few months. When I went on the station, it wasn't all that good, and by the time I left, you know you could certainly pay your bills and you could tweet from space. You could do you could do those things, and it's much it's much faster, much more practical now, which really makes it so that we can interact ourselves instead of. You know, be, having it be slow and a little bit cumbersome. Do you do that? Have you paid your bills in space? Uh, I didn't actually do mine, <laughs> but but one of my crew. Started? Oh, sure, my my crewmate. Uh, I I think uh, paid bills, bought plane tickets, all those things. Yep. How much tweeting? Changed uh, changed passwords. I don't do enough tweeting actually. I I I liked uh, I like tweeting, and I just really got just kind of busy up there and, and put my energies in different places. Um, my crewmate, Paolo Nespoli, tweeted quite a bit and just fascinating geography and mm -hmm. photos of the Earth that I thought were just really amazing. You know, as astronauts, I think we have a very special job. And I would say that most of us feel a responsibility to share you know, that job and the special worlds that we get to live in. You know, whether that world is working as one of the astronauts that straps in the crew of the space shuttle, or comes to the Kennedy Space Center and makes sure that everything is ready for them, or maybe your job is, um, I used to be the chief of robotics, making sure that the robotics training is going to work for the astronauts, that they're learning what they need to know so that when they get to their missions they're really ready. I mean, things that are just everyday jobs to us are amazingly fascinating and I think all of us like to share and social media is one of the ways to do that. And especially living on the space station, I feel, if you actually wake up and you perform everything on the timeline and more, you still haven't done enough if you haven't made some some ripples. If you haven't reached some people and shown, you know, shown people, I played the flute up there, and for some reason, you know, that people really just thought, wow, you can play the flute up there, and it made people relate to being on the space station. And I think that part of that is, is part of our job as well. And social media is a really easy and pretty fun way for us to do it. That's great. Uh, go ahead, you have a question? As a scientist, what do you think we'll see in terms of major breakthroughs in genomics, stem cell research, other types of life science disciplines that you might or your colleagues be working on? It's hard for me to talk in specifics about breakthroughs. Um, and at the same time, I think it's really interesting to have the laboratories up there and the facilities and be able to look just really at these conditions. We have um, centrifuges that can give us 1G, meaning just like here on the Earth. And at the same time, there's a set of plants or whatever kinds of cells that are in 0G. And so we can look real time at, at differences in development. And so having these kinds of mechanisms to study, I think there's no end to the answer that we're going to end up having. And some of the life sciences things are really exciting to me. I came back with you know, literally no bone loss. And that tells us that we're, we're learning how to live in space and how to bring people home safely after six months. And so you know, now we can go look at longer periods of time and, and you know, make sure that the, those kind of numbers are repeatable for other people. So what sticks out in your mind is your aha moment, whether it's as a scientist or whether it's launch or landing, training? or maybe as a child? Um, for me, waking up on the space station every morning, you wake up, usually I'm, I'm a sort of 10 minutes before the daily planning conference kind of person, so I wake up, open my door, float down the lab. The fact that you can wake up and, and you never have to like reset to zero, you never have to like, you know, get out of bed. I mean. 
from the moment you open your eyes, you're already floating and flying. And every day is like that. And that's what I loved.